I'm reading today from Psychic Energy, Its Source and Its Transformation by Esther Harding. Dr. Harding was an American who lived in New York and was one of the first disciples of C.G. Jung. In this video, I'm hoping to help you understand the three levels of consciousness. The gradual transformation of the instinct of hunger takes place in three stages. These correspond to the three phases of development of the human being that I have elsewhere called the naive stage of consciousness, the ego stage, and the stage of consciousness of the self. The same steps can be traced in the evolution of the other basic instincts, the urge to self-preservation, sexuality with its concomitant parental motive, and the will to power. In each of these realms, the biological needs and the instinctive impulses associated with them dominate the field of consciousness in the first stage, in which the focal center, the I, is completely dominated by autoerotic desires. I have called this center the autos. In the second stage, the ego becomes the center of consciousness and the instinctive drives are modified through their relation to the newfound ego consciousness, which in its turn says, I. In the third stage, the ego is displaced from its central position, becoming relative in importance to the new center of consciousness, the self, whose categorical imperative takes over ultimate control. It is interesting to observe that the Buddhism of the Mahayana sect also distinguishes three stages of human consciousness, which correspond to a surprising degree to the stages we have differentiated here. The naive stage, ruled over by the autos, in which the individual is completely dominated by his bodily needs and desires, marks the man of little intellect. The consciousness of such a man is exceedingly narrow, being bounded by the limits of his own biological desirousness. For him, the Buddhists say, the best thing is to have a faith in the law of cause and effect, that is, of karma. He is admonished to observe the outcome of his preoccupation with his autoerotic desires. The man in the ego stage of development is called by the Buddhists the man of ordinary intellect. His attention is wholly directed to controlling his environment for his personal satisfaction and advantage. He has gained some control over his instinctive desires and for him the ego is now king. He classifies everything in terms of his own wishes taking the good and rejecting the evil, not realizing that what he discards falls into the unconscious and does not cease to exist. In this stage, the Buddhists say, the best thing is to recognize both within and without oneself the workings of the law of opposites. The state of individual whom the Buddhists call the man of superior intellect corresponds to the third stage of our psychological classification. In him, the identification of the ego with the supreme value has been dissolved. In consequence, he experiences the inner dynamic factor as something other than the conscious ego, though definitely within the psyche. For his state, according to the Buddhists, the best thing is to have a thorough comprehension of the inseparableness of the knower, the object of knowledge, and the act of knowing. It must be borne in mind always that the psychological development we are discussing does not pertain to the individual's conscious personality, nor to his outer mask or persona. A man may have acquired exemplary manners, his behavior may be courteous and correct, he may be highly educated and have all the appearances of culture, but his instinctive and natural reactions, could they be seen when he is alone, 
might reveal him as a very different person. Or in times of stress, physical or mental, he might astonish his friends and even himself by the undisciplined and primitive reactions that suddenly usurp the attitudes of the well-drilled persona. Such reactions do not come from the conscious part of the psyche. They arise from the non-personal part and reveal not the conscious character, but the stage of development that the non-personal psyche has reached. A man's instinctive reactions being ecto a man's instinctive reactions being ectopsychic in origin are largely beyond the control of his conscious ego. Their nature and character will be determined not by his conscious manners and opinions, nor even by his moral conviction, but by the extent to which the instincts themselves have undergone psychic modification in him. A process depending in the first place as noted above, on the functioning of the instinct or urge to reflect. The gradual change in form of these instinctive drives reveals itself also in the evolution of religions, for the compelling and all-powerful factors of the unconscious are personified in the divine figures of the various beliefs. Man, as has been most aptly said, makes God in his own image, in the image not of the conscious self, but of the objective psychological factor which rules supreme in the unconscious part of the psyche. The gradual transformation that has taken place in the religions of the world runs parallel with the slow transformation of the non-personal and instinctive part of man's psyche. In the earliest days, the gods were conceived of as entirely external to man. They lived a life of their own in some spirit world, and the purpose of ritual was to build a bridge between mankind and these powerful, unpredictable overlords who had to be propitiated to the end that they would grant food and protection from enemies and bestow fertility on man and beast. This signifies that the gods represented the power of nature, nature outside of man, and also the instinctive nature within man. Before he had learned to control his natural inertia and unpredictable impulses, man felt himself entirely dependent on the whim of the gods for obtaining the necessities of life. But as his psyche gradually emerged from its instinctive bondage, and his power to control both himself and his environment grew greater, his religion also changed, passing through the stage in which the divine power was conceived of as a personal god concerned with the welfare of his worshippers, but hating the heathen who did not serve him. This theological concept corresponds to the ego stage of psychological development. In all of the more evolved religions, the central teaching has advanced beyond this stage and is concerned with the experience of a god within the psyche. Usually, however, it is reserved for the initiated who have been prepared by special instruction and discipline to experience revelations of this god personally. These come to the initiated as a subjective experience they are realized as being such and are understood as emanating not from a god in the heavens, but from a god within. They correspond to the objective part of the unconscious psyche. The exoteric teaching that postulates a god without, a denizen of heaven who looks down on his children from his celestial abode, caring for the bodily needs of man, and from whom all good things do come, including spiritual thoughts, the blessing of divine grace and redemption from sin is usually considered more appropriate for the uninitiated worshiper.